What's up, Doombots? Tony Skinjili here with Itemization 101. Now, we're going to go in depth into all the different types of items in this game in another video, but this is more of just a, hey, what does this do in my inventory kind of video. Make it quick, just so you don't get kind of caught wondering what's important, what's not. Uh, and we'll talk in great detail about stuff like gear and badges another time. First, let's just look at items in the game. The first thing you're going to run into, no matter what, is your inventory screen. It's going to pop off, right? You're going to have plenty of different types of items in the game. Uh, things that are common you're going to come across are med kits or potions. This is like 99% of your healing. Very few characters have healing abilities, so your healing is going to come through potions. Potions can be obtained through completing dailies, random missions that come up, uh, arbitrary random pools and stuff that you can get as you play through the game, and of course, you can purchase them. As you get higher level, you can do better potions. It tells you recover his HP by X amount. <clears throat> the joke kind of is, after you get to max level, the recovery of the HP becomes less and less valuable, like the amount it heals becomes less meaningful. When you first hit level 100, the level 95 or higher potion, you know it is, incredibly useful. Uh, you don't have that much health, and you can see by a character that I have sitting around level 100 right now. I don't have much, so 20% is basically a quarter of my health. It's a big heal. But as you get higher and higher, as your HP starts reaching 100,000, the heal isn't that meaningful anymore. The good news is, if you get to the point where you're so strong you have that much health, odds are you're doing enough damage too that you don't need the potions that much. It's kind of an okay balance, but there is no level 100 potion yet. No big deal. Other things you're going to see all the time are reports. Now, reports uh, are locked to the character. That doesn't mean you can't store them. As a matter of fact, one of the ways you can get more resources is by deleting a character you've maxed out and not spending any of the resources on them, putting them in the storage, saving them up. Every character's uh, resources are unique to the character. There are boxes that give you these types of resources, so you can save those if you'd like and open them on the character you decide you want to max out, but this is incredibly important for a character's enhancement potential. As you've seen, the enhancement potential on a character beginning level is always attack, defense, and HP, but as you move on, you start seeing a little bit more specialized information about, hey, cooldown decrease, debuff accuracy, cooldown decrease. This seems like the kind of thing my character wants. Um, so, without going too much in detail, you can know as much about the character you're playing just by looking and saying, like, hey, this guy likes debuff accuracy and cooldown decrease. I wonder what that means. It means those are the stats you want to itemize for as you go on. Uh, you're going to run across a bunch of these damage enhancers, or just enhancers in general. There's three different grades, for lack of a better term. Purple, blue, green. Greens are kind of not much. You can use them as you're leveling to get through some of the harder fights. Those really don't make too much of a difference. The purple and the blue ones are uh, harder to come by. Blue ones can be crafted in the workshop. We'll look at that in a second. Purple ones really are only given as rewards from random things. Uh, I generally speaking save the purple ones for content that's really hard in game, like raids that I'm not quite powerful enough to do, or Dark Zone. But the blue ones I use pretty freely. Eventually you'll get strong enough to go past them. These are an example of the blue ones. Uh, then you're going to have Convergium Particles. These are basically your crafting materials for quite literally everything in the game. We'll go through all the places and determine what those mean later. But basically they're just everywhere in those three stages. There's Unstable, Stable, and then I forgot the title, Super. Uh, you can find them in the inventory in a second. Uh, battle Badges are just a gear item for you that itemize with different types of options. Obviously you want to have the ones on the character that are the most beneficial to that character. So Debuff Accuracy is something Star Wars uses. Uh, guard damage, not incredibly important on him, but not a bad stat. There's very few dump stats in this game. There's just stats that characters utilize better. Uh, these are all kind of rated based on a color scheme, and I think you can kind of see all of them here. Uh, garbage, trash tier, white, uh, green, blue, purple, uh, basic MMO rules, uh, gold, and then red. Red is the rarest. You can see by the star counts. They have colors, and you can figure out real easy. 
Basically, the only difference is the number of slots you can put stuff into and the number of bonus options, as well as the general scale of what can happen. If you played a game like Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes, these are like mods. Um, actually, a couple of shooter games like CSGO have kind of stuff like this. They're itemization stuff. Uh, but as you go on and find new and exciting ways to build your characters out, uh, you'll notice that, well, sometimes a lower level is better than a maxed out level version of something as you build your character out. Uh, level 80 this is probably better than 90. It really just comes down to what you're looking for for your character, so you always want to itemize well. Cores, kind of the same situation. What they do is they go into the battle badges and they upgrade what you're doing by swiping an attack. These have the same scaling, white, blue, green, you know, they have the same basic number of stars and the higher they are, the better they do, but they do only ever give whatever this stat set. So there is a limitation on what slots you can put them on. It's not really a big deal. It's very unlikely you're going to be using incredibly high level, low or low level, high power items. You're always going to be itemizing for the best. Gear is gear. That's all it is. Just as a quick note, uh, anything that's shining or shimmering is a regional piece. It is a special piece, as is tradition. If something is shiny, don't get rid of it. Even if it's not the most important, one day it might be due to a rework or a character rebuild or something cool. You will get one head for every character you complete that mission series on. So once you finish the Hydra mission, you will get the head piece. You will pretty much get them in anywhere else. These are the regional gear pieces. Save these. Do not spend these anywhere. Everything else is really just about itemization for your build and what you're looking for. Sometimes you're going to end up with uh, set bonuses that you like. Sometimes you're not going to have too many, so you're going to end up with maybe a two set or two different two sets like I have right here. Uh, ultimately, the biggest thing you want to look for on all of your gear is right here, what items they have or what roles are on the gear. And every time you rank up the gear, by the way, same rules, one, two, three, four, five, different colors, nothing changes. Uh, every time you get a higher roll, it rolls a new stat for bonus options. This is kind of how you itemize. Uh, we'll go way into detail on, on gear just in general later, but that's pretty much everything as far as itemization concerned. The only things to note is there are a lot of items that this are just storage. You can store these items for potential reports. This is for any character you open it on. Uh, you'll get boxes. All of these are storable. Uh, and realistically, since they're stackable as you store them, uh, it's way easier to store these boxes than just to open them all the time because then you end up with a random item that you have to make a decision on. Hey, maybe there's a good Omega card in here. Maybe. Open it when you decide you want to pull for a character. Uh, moving to specialization or con anti-convergium. This is your specialization gear. Uh, there are three different tiers of this. This one's actually a little bit simpler. There are blue, purple, and green. I'm sorry, orange. There might be more in the future. Right now, this is pretty much everything we have, and this is how you build specialization in your characters. That's a video for another time, but you're going to get these from doing raids. Uh, we've already shown the reports for different characters are storable. Sin particles are craft materials. You can actually, anytime you ever want to know where you get stuff or how to use them, it tells you right here, and what you get for salvaging them. A lot of times, as you accrue more and more resources, you're going to say, well, Tony, what do I do with them? Um, some resources, some of the white and green resources, uh, especially battle badges, and maybe even some cores, you can go ahead and dismantle them, which is available right here. So if I have some battle badges I don't like, you can go ahead, dismantle, either manually select them or group select, click go. It'll convert them into an amount of gold, not a lot and unstable convergium particles. Generally, anything that's blue or higher, you want to save. I'll explain why right before the end. Um, there's nothing else really to look at here. I have quite a bit of storage, quite a bit of different things, as we were mentioning before. Uh, this is the crystallized convergium. This is the rarest one it gets. Uh, but these are the things you're going to need. You can also store draw tickets. Anytime you play through the game, there's a chance something might reward you with a draw ticket, whether it be a mission, or an event, or maybe you just bought them. Uh, these draw tickets allow you to go to the store 
and uh, pull a draw. Draws are gotcha, they're RNG, they're orbs or chests or whatever game you've played like this before. Um, you don't have to open these in the character that you get them on. You could just put these in the bank and move them to whatever character you want. The only one that really doesn't make a difference who you open them on is the dimension box. Uh, because all of the resources you could get from a dimension box can be transferred to quite literally any player. Or they just work on every player. So you don't have to work too hard on those. But the Omega cards and the costumes. Obviously if you want to work on another character. But hey... I'm on Star-Lord right now. That's a really cool costume. You probably want to maybe move the, the items to a character you do want to have a decent chance of pulling gear. Maybe a character you're making as an all, or maybe you're switching your main. Uh, Omega cards, also kind of the same way. And the main reason why is uh, at a certain star level, now most, star, most of these items, by the way, they reach the exclusive stat at four. This one's five because these are special cards or super rare cards. But I'll show you what I mean. At 4 star, it rolls a stat that is exclusive to the character who picks it up. So if I open this right now and I got this item, it would give a 4 star for Star Wars. And you can see what Star Wars exclusive stats are. You can still put this card on any character, but that exclusive stat will only apply when it's equipped to Star Wars. So being a little bit careful on how you spend these and, and get these kind of its own thing and that kind of talks about these two things on their own too the costumes and the omega cards we'll go into more detail in the future on those uh the last thing just to kind of showcase for everybody right here is the places where you can do stuff in the hub the first place is right here it is the workshop uh the workshop allows you to craft uh boxes with a drop chance to acquire costume gear now, right now, we only have these boxes. I assume in the future there will be harder to craft versions of these boxes for a better chance at getting Sakar, Hydra. You're going to hear a lot about regional gear. All you need to know about regional gear is it's called it's true end game gear. It's hard to come by, but as a result, the stats are better and the general uh, improvement to your character you get for getting them is great. These are almost impossible to come by whether it be because of the resources it takes to craft these materials sim particles aren't very common uh these you get for farming in the areas basically just killing anybody uh this is the hydra area you'll see these glimmering stardust it'll even tell you material used to craft xanderth costumes where to find them how uh, this is kind of a waste of time right now because it's very difficult to craft reasonable resources in the game um, these are the mid grains we were talking about before. You can craft these just for regular Convergium. They're not bad. Uh, these are basically upgrades. So if you can't quite do hard difficulty fights yet, but want to be able to buy it, you can turn smaller versions into larger versions of the materials uh, out of five to one. So it takes five of the base level anti Convergium to make the flawless, or a total of 15 of them plus the crafting to make the radiant. You don't want to be doing this. You want to just be able to farm the, the nodes you can. And you can farm any raid any time. We'll do that in the raid video. But these are what you can craft. Obviously, more things will be added over time. I will show that there is uh, one progress bar. And you can pay to unlock multiple different ones. All, up to all five of them. If I were to go and say craft a number of these. Uh, it will put whatever the stack I choose into this progress bar so if i'm like hey guys i'm gonna craft 10 of these for some reason well they're not gonna go one at a time it's gonna be an entire batch of 10 so you can buy extra slots this way you can kind of do one like two at a time it'll take a little bit longer it even tells you that sometimes these things take you know up to like an hour or two to craft you could pay to accelerate them don't waste your money on that unless like you're impatient not really worth it the next place to check out real quick for itemization is the convergence box this is where you're going to dump the materials, um, the blue battle badges, or maybe extra purple ones you come across. This is really the only use for them. Uh, you can dump them into here, as well as any collectibles you'll see. Collectibles are just random things scrolled across the world. Uh, there's a limited number of them. You'll play through and pick them up, I promise. You'll know what they are. They go into here. Uh, as you uh, put them in here, uh, it costs a little bit amount of gold, and it raises your total percentage towards the next sin particle. The synchronized particles uh, are basically super random RNG draws. 
You can get anything that's in this pool. Each of the five items has an equal chance of being acquired. Great. Uh, these are the random drops that could come up from there. And you can kind of see anything that's down here isn't particularly great. Sometimes you get some good items. And at any time, you can lock what it is to make this item stay for the next five refreshes. A refresh happens on its own every X hours, but also every time you push the button. So if there's a ton of gold or, uh, you know, a really good core, you can lock it and try again. This is basically where you're going to be dumping materials if you're not worried about gold. If you are worried about gold, please don't waste them. Uh, we're going to fly right past the core. Uh, I call this the, uh, the, the time waster. Um, what you can do here is you can put a number of the same type and spend these resources to upgrade it to a random core that's one higher. The problem with this is uh, you don't control what drops. So even if I put all three reds in, I wouldn't have any control over it being red. Uh, it's only a 50% chance to upgrade and um, it might be useless. And it takes a ton of these resources, which we're about to show you the best place to use these from. So it's kind of a waste. I don't ever even go here. If I want, I'll just dump these into that convergence thing. I'd rather roll the dice and get something than waste three materials, not even upgrade it, lose everything and the resources. Kind of a waste of time. I wouldn't recommend doing it. But if you got a ton of resources and you really want to throw away your stuff, you're welcome to do so. Hey, casino. Uh, last we have is enhanced costumes. This is where you're going to be spending the better part of your resources. Every costume is a 5 to 1 upgrade. And what does that mean? That means if I choose I want to upgrade this piece, I can put the piece in the middle and then pick 5 other pieces. Throw them into the costume uh, with the cost of these and it will upgrade. It will become 1 rank higher. It works the same way up. So every time you end up pulling a blue piece, it's actually really good. It's basically the equivalent of about 200 um, or so smaller pieces, right? Because you got to get them to green and then to blue. Same thing with purple. So these are really reasonable as far as upgrade materials. You feed them into each other. Another cool thing is, and I'll, normally I would show you, uh, if you take an item and you upgrade it, it has a chance to re-roll its, its color scheme, which is great because that's how you're going to pick your custom customization. Uh, and that's pretty kind of reasonable. Uh, this will give you just a little bit of value. And it's important to note that sometimes you're going to be working on different sets or different pieces. But you should always, when upgrading, try to find whatever has the items or the, the stats you want. Don't just worry about, I heard this was the best gear piece. It might be, but if it didn't roll very well stats and you're not you know, knocking out the set bonuses, then it really doesn't matter if it's the best in slot general item because the things you're dropping are terrible. Generally speaking, in this game, when you itemize for any character, uh, the stats are king. Everything else comes afterwards. So you can figure that out as you go based on which character it is. And that's pretty much all the itemization where you can use those things in the game. Um, hopefully, uh, some more stuff will come up and i'll go into real detail about all of the itemizations how you spend them and what points in the game and obviously i'll do some character videos and talk about what characters need and what you should use there but this is basically the long and short of it there's plenty of other items i haven't gone into yet uh because this video has already gone to 20 minutes and i feel like that's forever so uh, hopefully this was helpful to you hopefully you have a little bit better understanding of what's going on with your itemization in the game and how to use them and why they matter regardless of what anyone says. And if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, comment below, let me know, and I will do my best to address them either in a video in the future or on stream or in the comments. So anyway, have a good night. Have a great day. I've been Tony Scangeli, and I will catch you later.